All right, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Scott Rutherford. I'm a professor uh, in, the environment, in the environmental science program at Roger Williams. Um, I have two different screens going here today. One has the camera and one doesn't. So if it looks like I'm not looking away from you back and forth, it's just because I'm looking at two different screens at once. So uh, thanks for sort of coming to our virtual accepted students day. Um, appreciate having you guys here. And uh, if you were here, you would have picked a beautiful day to come. The nor'easter of yesterday has moved out and things are looking pretty good today. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, Roger Williams and the environmental science program in particular. And if you have any questions uh, while I'm doing this, uh, feel free to unmute and speak up or put it in the chat. And I'll try and glance over at the chat uh, and hopefully catch uh, anything that pops up there. Uh, so I'm here today to tell you about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, I will try and be as uh, honest and fair as I can. I don't want to tell you stuff that's not true. Um, but I do want to highlight what I think uh, we do very well here. So, uh, so today I'm going to talk uh, basically about five different uh, topics here, teaching, the science community that we have at RWU, uh, opportunities for undergraduate research, some of the facilities, and then some details on the curriculum. And for me, um, you see, the teaching is, is what it's all about. I mean, we're here for the undergrads, we're here for you guys. Um, None of us would be at Roger Williams if we didn't love going into the classroom and, and working with the students uh, every day uh, and working with you guys out of the classroom and chatting in the hallways and during office hours and whenever anybody wants to drop by. And so for me, that really is uh, uh, the big part of this. Uh, can you go to the next slide? Yep. Please. And it really is, um, you know, uh, an interesting little community that we have here. Um, I've become friends with so many students over the years. Uh, I've been doing this for 17 years now, and I still hear from ones that have graduated 12, 13, 14 years ago, uh, as well as some that just graduated a few years ago. And so it's really neat, the, the relationships that, that we get, because we are such a, a small, tight-knit group. Um, the, all of uh, the uh, environmental science, the, uh, the lectures are typically taught by full-time faculty. We have a few adjuncts that teach in the lab, and those adjuncts have been with us for a long time, and they do an awesome job. Uh, we know them very well. We generally have pretty small class sizes. Uh, to give you an idea right now, um, I have an upper-level environmental science class called Biogeochemical Cycles. So it's got a little bio in it, it's got some geo in it, and it's got some chemo in it. Um, and that class right now is running with eight students. Uh, and so we're having a blast there in a small class. Uh, well, we were having a blast there in a small class until we, we moved online and it's uh, quite, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's funny how you have 30 or eight, but that, but that class ran with eight students. Um, the biostatistics class that I co-teach with one of the math faculty, we have about 30 in there right now. Uh, classes really don't go over much over 30. I mean, sometimes we'll get 32, 34. Uh, but you're not going to be in a class with 100 students or 200 students. We also don't have any graduate students uh, in the sciences at Roger Williams. So that means that uh, our, our days and hours are not distracted by working with grad students and uh, focusing on their research and getting them uh, funding for graduate students and things like that. So, so it allows us more to focus on the undergraduate experience. And I already mentioned sort of the personal relationships that, uh, that we end up with. Megan, can you run that in slides in actually display mode? Um, if you click see. on the, uh, the little, uh, you can't see what I'm pointing to, the uh, yeah, screen image on the bottom, very, very bottom of the okay. screen. I am the worst. That one, yep. yep. Let's see if that works. Better? There you go, yeah, okay. So now you can jump to the next slide if you would. All right. Hopefully that'll work. Okay, so again, um, we are really student focused. Um, we are also, it's a, it's a weird mix because we are all um, pretty active scientists as well. Um, and it's actually kind of amazing how much research goes on um, with, with, uh, with, uh, with our group. Um, but a lot of that research is done with uh, undergraduate students. And that's one of the advantages of being in a place uh, as a student where we don't have graduate students. We really value working with the undergrads. Um, Many um, present at different scientific conferences, uh, both locally, nationally, and, uh, and globally. Uh, we are publishing in peer-reviewed professional journals, and, and many times students are co-authors on those publications. Uh, so there's a chance to do a lot more, uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute, um, than maybe at a, at a big state school with a, a big uh, 
uh, graduate student population. Um, it also allows us to bring our research back into the classroom. Uh, and so whether you're taking a, an aquaculture course or uh, talking about climate with me, um, you know, we can, we can bring some of that back to the classroom and, and the labs as well. Okay, go ahead, Megan, next one, please. Um, I, I don't know how many places you're, you visited or are visiting or virtually visiting, uh, but you'll hear everybody talking about experiential learning, uh, hands-on learning, active learning. Um, and so those things are, uh, are what we've been doing in the 17 years that I've been there. I mean, that's sort of the nature of science, right? I mean, it's not just sitting in a classroom listening to somebody go. You, you have to do it, whether that is uh, looking at uh, thermohaline, thermohaline circulation in fish tanks and oceanography, or herpetology when you get the uh, the snakes and the uh, or if that's a crocodile or a caiman uh, in the middle there, um, or even something like on the right there. I mean, there's there's lots of stuff that isn't just sitting in the classroom listening to someone. Um, there's lots of things to do um, hands on in the classroom, um, whether it's like I said, whether it's uh, uh, holding a, a reptile or trying to figure out. Um, geologic structures on the seafloor. Uh, next one, please. And of course, labs. Um, you know, you'll be in bio lab, chem lab, environmental science lab, and there's always lots of hands-on stuff to do there. And you can, you can tease your lab partner with fish parts and stuff like that if you want. Uh, next one, please. And in the field, um, we're in really an awesome location for field work. Uh, and obviously we're, we sort of focus that on the marine environment, uh, the coastal, because that's where we are. Um, but whether it's a, a, a part of a lab or um, an optional activity, or maybe even getting out and assisting in some research, um, we are in a really, really neat place to get out at, into the field. And I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, uh, later on as well. I'm, I feel like I'm going like a million miles an hour here. Does anybody have any questions at this point that I can uh, stop and answer? All uh, right, detecting none. I will try and slow down a little bit. Uh, I just had some chocolate, so maybe I'm a little zipped up here. Uh, okay, go ahead, Megan, next one, please. Uh, there are also some intercession field courses that you can take. Uh, two of these are in the winter, one in the summer. Um, for environmental science students, you can take one of these uh, options to, to uh, count towards your, toward your degree. Um, so if you don't like the cold weather uh, over winter break, you can go to Belize uh, and study tropical ecology or Panama, uh, neotropical marine biology. Uh, and then in the summer, uh, there's a field course, uh, Ecology of the Rockies, taught in Wyoming and Montana. Um, so there's actually opportunities, and these are, these are taught by Roger Williams faculty, so we know you and you know us. Um, and, and so there's opportunities to actually get out uh, during the, uh, the intercessions and, and get some good field experience as well. Uh, okay, go ahead, Megan. Uh, let me talk a little about community. Um, and this, for me, is really one of the, the fun parts about, uh, about Roger Williams. Um, you know, so you come in as an environmental science major and uh, I probably see you in your first semester in earth systems. Um, and then I probably see you uh, maybe not so much in your second semester, but maybe your, your sophomore year, I'll see you again uh, in a class. And then I'll, I'll almost certainly see you, at, you know, almost every semester, junior and senior years. Um, and, you know, we have about 50-ish majors in the environmental science class. Uh, we have a couple hundred majors that are in um, biology and marine biology as well. And it's really neat to see everybody interact with each other, whether it's, uh, you know, I have a, a marine biology student who used to stop by my office on Fridays after, after classes, and we would just chat about whatever cool science topic she wanted to chat about then. Um, and there really is a neat community that, that develops because we are so close together and tight together. And that's just not environmental science. That includes biology, chemistry, marine bio as well. Um, lots of clubs to get involved with, whether they're science clubs or non-science clubs, uh, honor societies. And we do run a weekly science seminar series. Uh, sometimes the speakers are the faculty at Roger Williams, but most of the time we bring in faculty members from other institutions to come in and, and talk about their research. Uh, next one, please, Megan. Uh, again, more community things. We have a scuba club, and they actually have a uh, scientific diving class where you have to carve pumpkins underwater. 
uh, lots of opportunities to help people too. Uh, there you see on the left, the Science Alliance General Chemistry Tutoring Session. There's actually a, a science tutoring center. Um, and if you do well in a class and like to help students who are taking that class, you can actually get a job uh, tutoring other students. It's a real job, it actually pays real money. Um, and you can get uh, sort of some reinforcement of the things that you've learned in classes and done well on. Uh, now you can help another student who might need some help uh, in the class. And um, again, more opportunities for, for external things. Uh, the Foundation for International Medical Relief of Children, if you want to uh, sort of interested in, in uh, medical issues and, and really sort of sustainability issues around the world, uh, there's opportunities to do other things as well. Uh, next one, please. Um, and there's food. Um, sometimes we eat it, sometimes we throw it. Um, so again, this is this idea that we really are pretty much uh, a little family here. On the left-hand side, uh, first couple weeks of classes when you arrive as a freshman, we have a, a meet your advisor barbecue event. And so everybody gets together in front of the building. We hope again this fall. Um, and you get a chance to meet your academic advisor. And it's one of the faculty members in the sciences. Uh, with environmental science, it's often me. I get about, uh, about half, but there's, just, there's several of us. Um, and it's just a fun time to hang out and, and, uh, and get, some, get some food and drink and, and uh, meet people. And then on the right-hand side was the Pi Your Professor fundraiser. Um, this was a actually a fundraiser developed by a student club. And so we've got uh, six of the science faculty over there getting pies thrown in their faces. And that was kind of a, kind of a fun event too. Um, I, certainly for the students. So you paid, I think it was, I think it was like two bucks and you get to smash a, a whipped cream pie in your professor's face. Um, and there's lots of fun going on. Um, next one please, Megan. Okay, uh, let me talk a little bit about the research opportunities. Um, so in addition to, to the teaching, uh, which I think we really do uh, look at as the main point of what we do, uh, we do a lot of research with undergraduate students. And um, I think this is, again, one of the cool things about our programs. Uh, I came through large institutions, um, Temple University for my bachelor's, uh, Virginia Tech for my master's, and University of Rhode Island for a PhD. And, you know, as under those big schools, they have big graduate programs, they have postdoctoral researchers, you know, big research dollars going on. Um, and there's not a, uh, you know, I shouldn't say there's not a whole lot, but there's, there's the, the undergraduate research opportunities are probably pretty slim um, because really the faculty are, uh, are focused on their graduate students. As I said, we don't have any graduate students. Um, so there's lots of opportunities to get involved in uh, undergraduate research if you desire. Um, sometimes it may be uh, you know, semester long, uh, year long, multi-year long uh, for a senior thesis, for example. Um, you can get paid for some of this if you're not getting credit for it. So sometimes we need uh, field assistance in the summer for research and there's opportunities to actually get paid to do that. Um, so there's different levels of, of how much you want to get involved to. Sometimes it's literally a faculty member saying, hey, I need a group to go out and sample. Uh, anybody want to go out on, you know, Friday after classes or Saturday or whatever? And we'll grab, uh, you know, some students and, and uh, you know, you guys can get out and get some, get some field experience. And it doesn't have to be a, a semester long or year long commitment. Um, it's just whatever you're available. Uh, next one, please. Uh, and those students who do get sort of involved in, in long-term research and maybe doing a senior thesis um, are often get the opportunity to travel to professional conferences to present their work. And there's just a big list of some of the different places our students have gone in the last couple of years. Uh, I sent a couple of students to the World Aquaculture Society meeting and National Shellfish, uh, Shellfishers Association meeting. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of places that uh, that students go and present their work. And it's, it's just getting your, your name out there and uh, your face out there and uh, a good opportunity to see what a professional scientific meeting looks like. Um, next one, please. Um, I mentioned a little bit about the, the summer work. Um, we do coordinate a summer scholars research program. Um, you can actually do this through Roger Williams or other Rhode Island institutions. So it's called the RI Surf, and you can Google this and check it out if you want. So Surf it, um, includes multiple institutions um, and projects of all various kinds. 
uh, that are going throughout the uh, throughout the state. Um, I won't speak too much about them there. Um, if you do um, get involved in these programs, whether it's the the RI Surf or um, for me, for example, I have some some grant money for the summer, which hopefully will happen. Well, I'm sure the summer will happen, but hopefully the project will happen. And so I've been actually recruiting for a uh, student to spend the summer doing some research. Uh, they will get free housing from the university and I have enough money to pay them for a reasonable summer stipend. Um, we also have some fellowships that you can apply for that are internal, like the Mark Gould Fellowship. Uh, so you can get your own money to do your own research. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do that. The Mark Gould Fellowship is one of them. And it's you know, a few hundred bucks for supplies and things like that. Uh, next one, please. Actually, can I stop you because Sarah Gray has a question? Um, yeah, sure. Sorry. It's, yeah, Sarah. Sarah asked if it's possible or are there opportunities to study abroad with an environmental science major? Absolutely. Um, we have many, many, many students that study abroad. Um, the favorite places seem to be Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we actually had one student, she graduated, uh, it's been, probably been five or seven years ago now. She did two study abroads, one in Australia and one in New Zealand. Um, there's lots of opportunities and we're, um, I guess one of the advantages of our small environmental science group is that um, you don't have to convince a hundred people uh, that this is a good idea to go here and take these classes. Um, we're pretty flexible uh, on the classes that will transfer back and count towards your major. Uh, so yeah, lot, plenty of opportunities. No problem studying abroad at all for a semester or, or even two semesters if you want. We can, we can actually, we've made that work. All good? Question-wise, anybody else yeah, while we're, while we're here? Okay, just a quick one, run through our facilities that we have for, um, for research and also for, for teaching. Um, I, I want to emphasize that uh, you know, it's teaching. It, it really is about the undergrad um, experience at Roger Williams. Um, so we have a learning platform that goes out into Mount Hope Bay, um, and that brings actually our seawater in for our uh, wet lab, you know, continuously running seawater. Uh, but we also bring our boats in here so we can get you out on the water quickly um, for a lab, for example. Um, you, know, you don't have to be transported to a marina to get on a boat. You just walk down the hill across the dock and the boat's right there and off you go for your lab class. Um, I won't talk about more about um, Matt Kalinowski is on the right there. Matt's one of our environmental science graduates uh, back a couple years ago. He's finished his master's up now. Um, go, go ahead, Megan. Sorry. Um, we are on the water, and that means our environmental science focus is uh, the marine and coastal environment. Um, I will say, if you're looking for forestry, that's not us. Uh, you don't want to come to Roger Williams for forestry. Um, if you're looking for agriculture, um, no, you don't want to come to Roger Williams for agriculture. Um, if you want sort of a good foundation of environmental science with focus on the marine and coastal environment, yeah, you want to come to Roger Williams. That's really what we, we do very, very well. Uh, we have a pretty good research fleet. Um, the Invincible Spear at the top right there, our new 30-foot boat, that can take out an entire lab section out on the water. Um, you'll do that in oceanography. And then we have some smaller boats that'll take out small research groups. Um, get you we'll try and get you wet and muddy as much as we can next one please uh, i mentioned the wet lab we have running seawater that goes through our wet lab um, so if you are interested in conducting experiments with marine organisms uh, there's probably you know not really a better place in the country for undergraduates to get involved in that um, with our wet lab uh, and if you are uh, looking for a job, um, there are work study opportunities in the wet lab. They are highly competitive, um, but you can apply to, uh, to do a work study in the wet lab, taking care of some of the animals and helping out on some of the research projects. And that's a great way to get started on something. Next one, please. Uh, next to the wet lab is the Blount Shellfish Hatchery, another place where you can get involved in what's going on. Um, so they actually spawn shellfish here um, for various restoration programs and aquaculture programs. And uh, we've had many uh, environmental science majors certainly uh, be working in there and working in some of the aquaculture and uh, oyster restoration uh, programs as well. Uh, 
the oysters in Narragansett Bay um, by the hurricane of 38 and then some diseases have been uh, really reduced to a non-commercial uh, population, but we're trying to actually uh, uh, help some of the uh, oyster farmers bring them back and uh, uh, aquaculture is growing in Rhode Island uh, and we have the only shellfish hatchery uh, in Rhode Island. So another chance to, uh, to get involved. Uh, next one, please, Megan. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the environmental science program. Uh, we are a pretty small group and that has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, there's four of us up there at the top that are sort of, um, most of our time is dedicated to environmental science. For me, I'm the, I'm the earth scientist. So if it's not alive, that's me. Um, and then we have some other faculty in the biology and marine biology programs that, that teach them classes and uh, you'll get to know them as well. But again, one of the, one of the I guess the, the good and bad, right? Um, well, let me, let me go on to the, the curriculum and talk a little bit about the good and bad too, but um, the good news is that um, I'm going to get to know you, you're going to get to know me, and that's true of the other faculty as well, because you're going to see us over and over again, um, because we are a smaller group. The disadvantage to that is that we don't have 50 classes to choose from, um, so you're a little more limited in your choosings, but you're getting a, sort of more personal attention. So it's, it's, you know, it's a trade-off of, of, uh, of benefits versus drawbacks for, for both of those cases. Um, so uh, let me talk a little bit about the, the curriculum. Um, this is um, one of the things you guys might be looking at is environmental science versus environmental studies. Uh, we are very much a environmental science program. Um, we're pretty hardcore science here. Um, there are opportunities to take some classes in policy, as you'll see coming up, but this is a serious science curriculum that we have. Uh, so we start off on the foundational courses on the left there. Um, you can see that there's an oceanography course is required because of where we are. Uh, but then there's also more of a policy type or a, a humans environmental course uh, there as well. Um, from there, you move on to some of the different uh, science courses. You have to take four semesters of chemistry, two of general chemistry, four, I'm uh, sorry, two of general chemistry, two of environmental, um, an ecology course, limnology, lakes. Uh, we're not just marine, so we can get some experience uh, in, in lakes. Uh, physics is required and a statistics class is required. So it's, it's pretty, uh, like I said, it's, it's a solid science curriculum that we have here. So these are all requirements for all the environmental science majors. Um, and then once you uh, sort of get some experience here, you can move up to the electives. And that's where you usually get to sort of pick and choose where you want to go with that. So can I have the next one, Megan, please? So these are some of the options uh, for your upper level electives. You have to take five total. Um, I think we're probably missing a couple here as well. But, and I've sort of put these into categories uh, depending on what your interests might be, but it's wide open. You can, you can choose any ones you want here. So starting from the uh, upper left, for example, if you're more into the earth science thing, um, you'll see me in marine geology, meteorology, and biogeochemical cycles, for example. Uh, if you're more interested in resource management and conservation, uh, you know, marine resource management, conservation biology, fishery science is three classes that you might be interested in, uh, in taking. Uh, on the bottom left there, uh, some skills classes, the GIS course, a great tool to have in your toolbox. Um, environmental monitoring, how do we monitor the environment and do some statistical analysis on the data and a toxicology course uh, as well. Um, more ecology on the upper right, urban ecosystems, marine eco, soil ecology, uh, some engineering classes if you want to look into the engineering side of things. Uh, and then the intercession field classes that I mentioned before. So, so here's where you really get to sort of pick uh, the things that you're interested in and want to pursue in more detail uh, after you sort of have that foundational uh, background in environmental science uh, from that first, first couple sets of classes there. And I think that's it. One more, please. Oh, I want to talk about this um, because I think this is kind of cool. Um, at Roger Williams, you have to do a core concentration which is five courses unrelated to your major. And I think this is a, a really cool way to take your environmental science, what you're learning there, and sort of combine it with um, another discipline. And I think this makes students more marketable. Um, the fact that you have this sort of this other, other ability um, that you may not have if you went somewhere else. And uh, core concentration is one course short of a minor. 
So many of our students will take the extra course and get the minor. And I've listed a few there that sort of, uh, I think dovetail really nicely with environmental science, like sustainability studies. That's a pretty popular core concentration um, for our environmental science majors. Uh, languages, um, again, the ability to have the environmental science, but also go into some place uh, and speak Spanish or speak French, right? Or speak Chinese, um, something that somebody else can't do. Uh, applied math, another one. Um, you know, if you can use mathematics to address uh, environmental problems, that's another sort of feather in your cap or another tool in your toolbox. Um, environmental sciences students have done core concentrations in political science, economics, creative writing. Uh, I've had one that did dance. Actually, I think I have more than one now that did dance uh, as a core concentration. And there's many, many more uh, from history to sociology. Um, there's, there's lots of choices for the core concentration. And I think it's kind of a cool connection um, to your major uh, and a, sometimes a cool diver uh, diversion from your major too. Because um, it allows you to pursue something that you something else that you might love and, and still counts towards your towards your graduation. Uh, so I think that's the last one, Megan. One more. And it was just uh, uh, hope to see you in the fall. And um, and I, what kind of questions can I answer? You must have answered them all. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. You don't want to go there. That's leftover from last year. No oh, juice. At the bottom. I'm just gonna X out. <laughs> okay. So let's Sorry. see, what else can I say um, to prompt more questions? Maybe I lost, oh, there's the chat. Okay, I got the chat back again. Okay. Um, so uh, again, one of the things I think is cool, um, we, so environmental science, as I'm sure you guys are aware, right, is sort of a combination of biology and chemistry and earth science and throw some math in there to make it interesting too. Um, one of the things that's cool about our group is that everybody's in the same building. So all the faculty, chemistry, physics, bio, marine bio, environmental science, we're all sort of in the same little circle of offices. Um, so we all know each other and it allows us, if you're, if, so if you come to me after a class and say, hey, you know, I'm really interested in sort of uh, the, the chemical issues in the environment. Um, and I, I know everybody, right? So I can say, well, you know, Dr. Timpson, he's actually working on um, uh, better solar voltaic cells. So if you're interested in the chemistry end of things and maybe making a difference in, in sustainability and renewable energy, um, you know, why don't you see about, uh, I can introduce you to Dr. Timpson and, and maybe he can talk to you about the work he's doing on solar panels or solar cells. And that kind of thing goes on all the time. Um, whether it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested in uh, the environmental impact of the recovering seal population on Cape Cod. I don't know if we have anybody from Cape Cod out here, but of course, it's the, uh, if you, along with the seals come the great white sharks uh, in the summer. And so, you know, Paul Webb, he's our marine mammal guy. So I can say, hey, you know, let me introduce Paul because uh, he's working with, with seal populations in Narragansett Bay that come up in the winter. And you can go collect some seal poop with him maybe. Um, and so I think that is kind of one of the cool things about Roger Williams is, is this, this sort of um, the group that's all together. I have a question from Amanda. How much overlapping classes are there if you double major in marine bio and environmental science? Uh, there is a fair bit of overlap. We do limit it um, so that you can't sort of you know, double dip everything, but you can pick and choose. There is overlap. Um, that's a very common combination, uh, marine bio and environmental science as a double major. Um, and you can start out in either one of those, and it's usually fairly easy to switch to one or the other. Um, so if you're not sure, um, don't feel like, you know, once I pick it, that's it. Um, because in environmental science and marine bio, you're going to take oceanography, you're going to take bio 104, uh, you're going to take, uh, so those, and those are um, pretty much in your freshman year. Um, so very quickly, you'll get a sense of what's going on. Uh, the chems, uh, some of the chems overlap, the physics overlaps, um, and there's a few more too, like fishery science. So yeah, you can overlap quite a bit. There is a limit to it though. Uh, and we have environmental science majors that switch to marine bio or bio, and we have bio and marine bio majors that switch to environmental science. So don't feel like you have to come in here and uh, you know, know exactly what you wanna do for the rest of your life. 
uh, there is flexibility. Hope that helps, Amanda. And you can check out the um, the Roger Williams uh, catalog on the website, and you can you can get the majors, and you can see the requirements for the majors. Um, what does the job market look like for students who have graduated with a major in environmental science? Are there jobs out there for us? If I told you every graduate in environmental science gets a job in the environmental science field, I'd be lying. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that. Um, I will say they seem to do pretty well. Um, uh, we have, uh, so let's say last year, who do I know from last year? Um, Rachel got a job with an environmental, she did an internship with the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management. Um, and then she got a job in, with an environmental consulting company. Uh, she graduated last May. Uh, last I heard from her, she was still working for the environmental consulting company. Um, uh, what's her name? Um, I'm forgetting her name now. Uh, anyway, she was more interested in the policy side of things, and the name will come to me in a minute. And she actually did two internships with Senator Sheldon Whitehouse um, and uh, has more gone on to the policy side. Uh, she's active with Save the Bay. I haven't heard from her in a little while. I'm not sure what she's doing now. Uh, we've had students go into environmental education, um, whether it's with uh, one actually was a student from California, and she went into um, uh, environmental education on Catalina Island uh, a number of years ago. Um, another went into the, the AmeriCorps and was working in some of the national parks for a while. Uh, last I heard, he actually, he just started uh, grad school this year. He decided to go back to grad school. So it actually looks pretty good. At least it did, um, you know, a year ago. Uh, obviously right now things are not so good for anybody. Um, they seem to do okay. Uh, they really do. Um, not everybody gets, and some of them I can't figure out why, why they have a hard time getting a job in the environmental field. Um, but they seem to do pretty well out there. Uh, I will say, uh, is it Sarah? I will say, Sarah, one of the things you want to do, no matter where you go, is I, I tell students that come in, you, you come in with, a, I'll say, an empty toolbox. I know it's not empty, right? You've been through high school. But you come in with a, a toolbox and what you want to do is put as many tools in that toolbox as you can and do different tools. Don't just put all screwdrivers in there. And that's sort of where that core concentration idea comes into. Um, you know, take the GIS mapping class, um, take the chemistry seriously, learn some of the chemical instruments. Um, you can actually take an instrumental chemistry class. Um, put as many tools in your toolbox as you can so that when you're out there looking for jobs, you're not just, oh, I can only do this one thing. Um, take as much math as you can possibly stand, right? Take as much statistics as you can possibly stand. Um, it allows you to do things that other people can't do when you're, when you're looking for jobs. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened to me. Um, in my career, I've, I've developed a toolbox of um, computational techniques and computers that, uh, that allows me to get involved of, in all kinds of different things along the way. So I've done research on climate. I've done research on microbes in uh, marine sediments. And I've done research on currents in Narragansett Bay. Um, and so I've, I've sort of been able to use my toolbox to, to basically do whatever somebody will pay me to do. Any other questions from anybody through chat or live? I'm going to try and type my email in the chat here. And uh, hopefully that worked. Oh, that says privately. Not sure if I'm doing this right. Um, I don't know if everybody sees that. Oh, no, I see. I I'm learning. I'm learning everyone. There we go. S. Rutherford at um, Perfect. So that's my email address. If you guys do think of some questions later on, um, feel, feel free to send me an email. Um, it may take me a short while to get it because as you can imagine with everything electronic and online, the email is crazy these days as I try and keep up with uh, making sure that my students get what they need um, from me at pretty much all hours right now because uh, 
they're uh, they're doing what they need to do and i'm doing the best i can to help them whatever however i can uh, so feel free to email me if you have a question happy to answer anything uh, you can come up with thank you very much appreciate it thanks for stopping in everybody all right have a good rest of the weekend everyone stay safe take care